team this evening as we continue our journey <clears> through <throat> the Gospel of John. So November 13 to 17 is the time that uh, Jesus spent in the upper room with his disciples. 18 here, Christ went to the garden with his disciples and as we saw last week, was taken by the officers of, of the high priest and led by Judas, who had betrayed Jesus Christ. And uh, tonight, we look at uh, Peter's denial, which Christ prophesied of. Remember, right at the beginning of the time in the upper room, there in chapter 13, Jesus prophesied that Peter would deny the Lord three times. And so we'll look at verses 15 through 18 and then 25 to 27, which is about Peter. So we'll start in chapter 18, verse 15 of John. It says, And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold. And they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. Now down to verse 25. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. So Peter then denied again. Let's pray. Lord, I pray you'd teach us through your powerful and precious word tonight. We are thankful that you recorded these things for us, Lord that we might learn, and uh, Lord, that we might grow. We pray the Holy Spirit would now guide us in your truth, and that you'd be glorified in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so if you get back to chapter 13, we'll see where Jesus predicted this would happen. The first chapter there of Jesus with the disciples in the upper room, John 13, 37. It says, uh, Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Verse 38. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life, thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. <coughs> and Jesus here predicted uh, what would happen, that Peter would deny the Lord three times. And um, here we see in John 13, Peter making this bold declaration. I'll lay down my life for you, Lord. Uh, in other places, he denied that he would ever deny. Um, and you know, God is more interested in our service and our obedience than he is in our big, bold words, isn't he? Our big de declarations. I'm going to do this. or I'm going to be this. Um, God would rather we just do it and be it rather than say it. And uh, Peter here should have realized his own weakness. And when the Lord of Heaven says, you're going to deny me, I think the response should have been, help me not to, or I'm sorry, or some sort of repentance. Um, and that wasn't the case. In Luke 22, if you want to turn there, Jesus even said that he prayed for Peter, Luke 22, verse 31, which is a great blessing. To have Jesus say to, to you, I have prayed for you specifically. Wow, that's, that's pretty exciting. Uh, Luke twenty two thirty one, 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny Here he actually specifically said, I prayed for you, 
you are going to deny me, but I pray that your faith will not fail. And, of course, that's something that we all want, isn't it? That our faith doesn't fail. But you know, the Bible says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Our perspective always needs to be, I'm just a step away from falling like Peter fell. Rather than, no, I'm tough, I can do this. Nothing can get to me. It's just not true. We're all weak. And if we're not walking in the Spirit, if we're not being led by the Lord and His power, uh, we are susceptible to Satan just like Peter was. And that always needs to be our perspective. And so Peter, we see here, chose to follow Christ, but he followed afar off. Uh, we're told in Luke 22, verse 54, Peter followed afar off. He didn't stay with Jesus. He just kind of stayed back in the distance just to kind of watch what was going to happen. Whereas the one disciple, as we just read about, he actually was willing to go into the hole. Even though Christ was being tried and accused, he, he was going to stand with Christ. But Peter, no, he chose to stand back and, and stand far off. Um, and as we see in verse 16 of our passage, he stood at the door without. And this is when he had his first challenge um, by the damsel who said, aren't you one of the disciples? Right there was this opportunity to say, yes, I'm one of the twelve. But instead he said, I am not. And instead, in verse 18, it says the officers and the servants were standing outside the hole with a fire burning, and they're warming themselves. And it says Peter stood with them and warmed himself. He's standing here with the enemy, <laughs> the very ones who had just captured Christ illegally. He's standing there with them, warming himself at the enemy's fire. Um, probably not God's perfect will. I think we would all agree. Is we need to stay away from the enemy. We need to avoid these things. You know, the Bible says, be not conformed to this world. Um, and yet Peter here is, he's fallen, let's face it. Um, so verse 25, his second denial. Uh, this time uh, they said unto him, art not thou one of the disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. Denying Jesus is not God's will. Amen? Matter of fact, in Luke 12, the Bible says, He that denieth me before men should be denied before the angel of God. Denying Jesus Christ is not something that should even be in our vocabulary, should it? We are His disciples. We are His servants. We are His children. He saved us from hell. He's given us a home in heaven. And so we should never be deny Jesus. Uh, so, verse 27 and verse 26, one of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? In other words, you cut off my cousin's ear. <laughs> a brother doesn't say how they related, just that they're kinsmen, but a family member of the, of the very servant that, whose ear Peter cut off said, I recognize you. And verse 27, Peter denied again. Now, if you look at a parallel passage in Matthew 26, let's turn over there. Peter not only denied the third time, but the third time he actually cursed and swore just to get his point across that he was one of them rather than one of Christ's. So notice Matthew 26, 73, right at the end of Matthew 26. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. He just spent three and a half years with Jesus, watching Christ preach and work miracles. He worked miracles himself. And here he cursed and swore and said, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus. And he went out and 
wept bitterly. Why did he curse and swear? Well, if you hang around the world long enough, you start talking like them. The Bible says that um, we're, we're going to end up like the people that we hang out with. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, Proverbs 13, 20, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. If we hang out with, with worldly people, we're going to start acting like them. We're going to start talking like them. Uh, but beyond that, he was trying to make it ever so obvious that there's no way he could be one of Christ's disciples if he's willing to curse and to swear and to deny Jesus so vehemently. But it's good for us to look at a parallel passage in Luke 22 now. <clears throat> Because right before this third denial, right after this third denial, Luke twenty-two sixty, 60, Jesus actually looked at Peter. Notice Luke twenty-two sixty, 60. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crowed, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Well, that's the right response, of course, is to be sorry and repentant. But what a blessing that Peter was told in advance by Jesus, I'll pray, I prayed for you. You're going to deny me, but I prayed for you that your faith doesn't And Peter, he failed. There's no other way to say it, is there? He denied Jesus. He, he cursed and he swore. He warmed himself at the end of his fire. He did just what Jesus said he would do and said, I do not know the man. <clears throat> How sad. But again, let, let's not look down on Peter too hard and say, well, you know, I would never be like Peter. Instead, we should be, realize without God's help, I'm just another. But what's really exciting about this whole story is, is that God wasn't done with Peter. And I love that. That he didn't say, that's it. You denied me three times. I'm finished. I'm putting you on a shelf. No. Matter of fact, if we go to Mark, 6, Mark 16, um, this is... So beautiful. Just two words that just slip in here. It's only found in Mark. And it's after the resurrection of Jesus. Now we, we all know where Peter's where Peter is right now and in his in his heart, right? He's he, he feels like he's, he's it's done. He's denied Jesus. Jesus looked on him. He went out and wept bitterly. He figures out my ministry's over. And now Jesus has been crucified. It's, it's, you know, he probably feels pretty defeated. And I love this. Uh, the angel who spoke to the first ones that came to the tomb, which are the two Marys, note, look at verse 6. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted, that Mark 16 6. Ye see, Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, he is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Verse 7. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter. You just squeeze that in there. Go tell the disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. Isn't that beautiful? In other words, God is not done with you, Peter. Go tell the disciples and Peter. Specifically, I want to point out Peter. Go tell him that Jesus has risen from the dead. Then, right after that, we, we know the story when Peter, still not right with God, in John 21, said to the disciples, I go a fishing. I'm not, you know, really, I, I don't consider myself a faithful disciple anymore, so I'm going to go fishing instead of serve the Lord and Many of the disciples went fishing with him. And we, we know the story. They caught nothing. 
until Jesus showed up on the seashore. They said, cast the net on the other side, and you know the story. Um, but after they came to shore, Matthew, you go to John 21, um, verse 15. Same Peter that has denied Jesus three times. I just love this whole story because the Bible says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord in Psalm 27, 23. And it says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Peter fell, but he wasn't utterly cast down, was he? And God reached out to him right after the resurrection. And then Jesus bothered to come right to the spot where Peter took some of the disciples fishing. He could have gone anywhere, but he came specifically there to bring the guys on into the shore so he could sit down and talk to them. But who did he talk to? But Peter. 2115. So when they had, deni had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, he didn't talk to John, he didn't talk to James, he didn't talk to any of the other disciples. They're all there, but he just talks to Peter. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto them, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith unto them again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved. Because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. I'm not done with you. I want you to serve me. I want you to be one of my shepherds. I want you to feed my sheep. Which takes us to Acts chapter 2. I just thought it was important that we see the whole story and not just stop at the third denial and the weeping bitterly, but to see what happened after and here in Acts chapter 2, verse 14, it says, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. So the, the sermon that was preached at Pentecost, Peter preached it. Of, of all, all the twelve, it was Peter that preached. And notice down in verse 40, And with Many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So this same Peter, who denied Jesus three times and went out and wept bitterly, thought it was over, the angel said at the resurrection, Go tell Peter. Jesus is going to meet you. Jesus came to the seashore after he took some of the fishing and said, come in. And he had prepared for them a small meal. And then he said, Peter, do you love me? I want you to feed my sheep. And then not long after, on the day of Pentecost, when all these Jews had gathered for this great celebration, this great feast, God worked a miracle. And through the gift of tongues, and they were able to hear this message in their own language. And through the preaching of none other than Peter, more than 3,000 people got saved. The same Peter. So he denied Jesus. Not, not good. Not right. Jesus even told him it would happen. Even warned him. And then the conviction and the, the guilt and the sorrow over over denying Jesus, and Jesus looked at him and he wept bitterly. But our God's a God of mercy. Amen? And forgiveness. And he reached out to Peter and said, Come back. Come back and serve me. And Peter did. And we have half of the book of Acts is all about the ministry of Peter. And all that God did through him. It's quite beautiful. So he denied the Lord, and we must always remember that we're no better than Peter. We're just sinners saved by grace, just like Peter. And that we should never think that we stand. We talked at the camp, we had a message about self-sufficiency. Never feel like we're sufficient of ourselves, because we aren't. We need God all the time. But the devil's always there, the flesh is always there, tempting us to fail. 
things and fail the Lord, but God is always there, ready to help us and make us up. Hallelujah. So Peter denied again, but then God still used him. Hallelujah.